Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, a first year medical resident. Last week, you guys joined me on a really tough call shift. And I was kind of opening up about how these days can be challenging and I actually have to work to stay positive and it doesn't just come naturally. So as requested, here's a video of six ways that I actually work to stay positive, especially on those tough days. And I'm challenging you to work with me this week and I want us together to think of something every single day that you're grateful for. So I'm gonna be posting in my community tab here on YouTube a picture and something that I'm grateful for starting tomorrow on Sunday. And then I'm hoping that you're gonna reply and tell me what you're grateful for. Because at the end of the day, it's about practice, and it's about building habits, and it's about remembering to be positive. So this is our week to practice together. So here come six strategies for you to stay positive. Okay, tip number one, the positive rant. So we all know the negative rant, right? Like you have a bad experience and you just wanna get it off your chest and talk to everyone about it and you really do feel better. That is a valid way of dealing with emotions for sure. But why not have the positive rant too? Why not talk about your great day or talk about how you had a great experience on call? I just had that experience today where I was talking with a friend and we just went on and on about how much we liked our current staff and the way he was teaching and the way we were learning and we had expectations and we felt like in a month we were gonna be better doctors for it. And all of a sudden, the next day you walk in and you're feeling that positivity about your staff and about your team. So it kind of feeds forward. So tip number two is to focus on people and stories rather than just getting tasks done. So, okay, that, that call shift that I showed you guys last week, you can imagine, I could say, man, I had four consults to do and I had to write like 23 notes. That does not sound exciting or positive. But instead, if I go to the emergency department and I meet this person that I'm admitting, and then I found out that this person had fought in World War II, all of a sudden, wow, I'm actually admitting uh, a veteran. I've got someone who has this incredible life story. And all of a sudden, I feel so much more value to what I'm doing overnight. Even at four in the morning, I feel a positivity being around that person and, and hearing about their life. Actually, one of the tips that a staff physician gave me was to ask, older couples, how long have you been together? Um, or how did you guys meet? And I just love it, oh my gosh, when you see these 90 year olds who just light up and they start telling you this story, that's a real interaction and it, it feels so positive. Tip number three, music. I mean, you put on a good playlist and you just feel the energy, right? So I have playlists for in the shower. I have my um, movie music playlist, so it's like, intense music that I, for whatever reason I get really excited about because I feel like I'm in a movie then. Um, what else do I have? I have like upbeat pop music, uh, especially for getting ready in the morning. I don't know, find your playlist. Tip number four, reframe a negative interaction. So, okay, I can give you a good example actually from last week. So I was on the phone with someone in the hospital and they were so rude to me. I was shocked actually and it left sort of this awful feeling afterwards. And rather than carrying that around all day, kind of this weight on your shoulders, instead, I decided to just make up a story. So, oh man, she must have had a terrible day. Someone must have been really rude to her, or she must just be worked so hard, or maybe something really bad just happened. Maybe their family member is ill. Maybe she was up all night because her daughter was sick. Who knows? It doesn't even have to be true. In fact, it definitely isn't true. But the point is, by creating a story, I'm able to be more empathetic towards another human and somehow things just roll off your shoulders then. You don't have to carry that with you. So I'm not saying that it's okay that she was rude to me, but I am saying that I have a choice to carry that with me or not. Okay, so number five. Now this is sort of when you're not feeling quite right and you don't really know why and you're just not feeling it yourself, think of the acronym HALT. And that stands for, am I hungry, angry, lonely, tired, and let's actually add another T, so halt a T. <laughs> um, because I got a great comment from Maureen in the last video saying, you know, when you're thirsty, that can also do it. So from now on, I'm gonna think halt t when I'm not feeling quite right and try to fix those things if you can. And six, last but not least, take a moment to take a scenic route when you're walking. 
may seem like a really, really little detail, but for me anyway, those couple of seconds where I'm walking and I choose to go by the window, for instance, rather than down the dingy hallway where you don't see light forever, um, in that moment, I take a breath, I look outside, I just allow my body to sort of relax a little bit, and it's just a moment in the day of bliss. For me anyway, so I think find those moments for yourself, find those moments in your workplace or, or anywhere and, and take those for yourself. You deserve it. Take that moment. So there's actually literature written on positive psychology and they found that if you take the time to be grateful, so make an effort to be grateful, that people actually find more satisfaction in their life. So that brings us to our challenge this week. I really want to work on this with you guys. So each day I'm going to be posting here on my community tab and on Instagram. So whichever one you like better. And I'm going to be telling you something that I'm grateful for. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you're grateful for each and every day. So there are tons of other ways to work on your personal wellness, whether that's exercise, spending time with your friends, having hobbies. These are just six of the ways that I work on staying positive, especially on those tough days like that call shift. So comment below and let me know, do you have any other ways that you stay positive throughout the day? Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I hope that you have an awesome, positive, great week ahead of you. I'll chat with you on Saturday. Bye for now.